In this video, I played Terraria, but here's the twist. Every time I damage an enemy, I gain experience that goes towards leveling up my bows. With each level, increases the damage, critical strike chance, size, and best of all, additional arrows that I'm able to shoot out. Things are about to get insane, so stay tuned to witness it. Let's get started. So getting my hands on my first weapon is very simple. I'm just going to chop down a few trees for some wood. And with the wood, I can craft the wooden bow. So let's make a workbench. And there we go, wooden bow. Now obviously this bow is going to be short-lived because once I collect ores such as platinum or gold, I'll be making better ones straight away. I'm also going to try to craft some NPC houses as soon as possible to get the merchant to spawn so that I can purchase arrows from him rather than trying to find them in pots or chests. Okay, five NPC houses should be good for now. Found shoe spikes. And there we go, the merchant has arrived. But I'm going to keep exploring the jungle first to see what else I can find. Found some gravitation potions. That means I can get my hands on some pretty good accessories. Found the band of regeneration. Found the suspicious looking eye. So I can fight the Akuthulu whenever I'm ready. And the magic mirror. There's a bunch of sapphire. Is this enough for a hook though? Oh, it is. Perfect. Okay, my inventory is completely full, so let's head back home. The traveling merchant's selling the DPS meter, so I guess I'll buy that to keep track of my damage. Okay, inventory is kind of cleared out. So we're going to make the sapphire hook first. Then the platinum bow. Ooh, and we got rapid on it. So that's a 9 damage upgrade from the wooden bow. And I'll be making the platinum pickaxe to speed up mining a bit faster. And with the remaining gold that I have, let's just buy a whole bunch of wooden arrows. Okay, the next plan is to get some armor, and I'm thinking of getting the fossil armor because it does increase range damage. So let's head over to the underground desert. Oh, I just got the aglet, so I can make lightning boots later on. And this is actually a really good place to level up my bow because the monster spawn rate is pretty high here. Now let's mine as many desert fossils as possible. And I also do need to find the extractinator. My platinum bow is almost at level one, just one more hit. But let's see what changes. It has 13 range damage and 4% critical strike chance. So let's attack once. It now has 15 range damage and 5% critical strike chance. So it seems to increase by two damage every level then and plus one critical strike chance. I'm also beginning to shoot two arrows at the same time now, but once it does hit level three or four, then shooting two arrows at the same time should be at 100%. Wait, is that the extractinator down there? I think it is. Yeah, it is, nice. Let's just clear out all of these monsters first. Oh, the jester arrow is so good. I do only need five more life crystals until max health. So before I go back up onto the surface, I'm gonna collect the remaining life crystals. All right, that should be max health. Let's go back home. Now it's time to extractinate all 2000 desert fossils. This is gonna take a while. So I now have 276 sturdy fossils. Let's go craft the fossil armor. There we go, 21 defense, and the set bonus gives us 20% chance to save ammo, and the helmet plus greaves give 8% increased range critical strike chance in total, while the plate armor gives 5% ranged damage, which brings our platinum bow to 20 range damage and 15% critical strike chance. Now I did collect a lot of rubies, so I'm thinking of killing the king slime a couple of times to level my platinum bow. And then at night time, I'll go ahead and summon the Eye of Cthulhu. Got myself a slime crown. Let's begin. I think after this fight though, my platinum bow should be to at least level 5. And hopefully by then, I'll be able to shoot two arrows 100% of the time. Two more hits. And you're done. Let's clear the rest of the slimes out. 
Okay, let's check it out. Level 4. Still not at 100%. But it is nighttime now, so I guess after the Akuthulu, it should be at level 5. Okay, let's begin. And we're dealing about 130 damage per second, which is pretty good. Second phase already. There we go. That was surprisingly very fast, considering I only have the Platinum Bow. Oh, but it's still not to level 5. It's almost there though, 5% more. Let's go one more time. Oh! The Fallen Star. Okay, there we go, level 5. And it does shoot out to 100% of the time now. But that doesn't really matter anymore because I do have Demonite Ore now. Which means I can craft another bow, which is a lot better. And that is the Demon Bow. Ooh, superior on it. Okay, back to square one. The boss that I'll be fighting next is the Queen Bee for a chance to get the Bee's Knees, a bow that shoots out homing bees. Okay, here's a pretty good place to fight the Queen Bee. A big, spacious area. Arena is all complete. Let's go summon the Queen Bee. And depending on how it goes, I might have to use the Platinum Bow if things are starting to get too hard. But we'll see. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. Let's go up. All right, let's go. Okay, this is good. I'm starting to shoot two at the same time now with this bow. I think I'm good. I think I'll just be sticking with the demon bow then. All right, Queen Bee has been defeated. Let's see if the bee's knees is in this treasure bag. Nope, doesn't look like it. Luckily, there is another hive right above the arena. Round two, here we go. Okay, second time's the charm, maybe? There it is. Oh, wow, it has 29 range damage without any damage modifiers. That's pretty good. I'll be using this bow from now on. However, I can only use wooden arrows, otherwise I won't be able to summon homing bees. So fire arrows is a no-go. But once I switch over to wooden arrows... But once I switch to wooden arrows, then it shoots out the homing bees. I also did get the hive pack, so... The feral claws are basically useless. I'll just replace it with that then. And now our bees are even stronger. Look at the size of them. Oh my god. I should be capable of taking down the Eater of Worlds now with the Bee's Knees. So let's head over to the Corruption. Last Shadow Orb until the boss summons. Here we go. Let's try to get back to the arena. Come on, make it through. There we go. Fifty percent health left. Jesus, my bees are insane. Almost done here. Oh, I'm shooting out like three lines of bees. Oh my god. Wait, what level is this thing at? Level seven. So from twenty-nine damage all the way to thirty-eight. Okay, I have to fight the Eater of Worlds one more time. Jesus, this weapon is insane! <laughs> level 10 now, almost to level 11. So one shot? That's four lines of bees. And just look at how many it summons too. Having some shadow scales now, let's make the Nightmare Pickaxe. And I think I'm just going to stick with the Fossil Armor set and not make the Shadow Armor because this set does give a boost to range damage. The next boss that I'll be taking on is Skeletron. 
So let's head over to the dungeon and build the arena. Okay, arena is all done. Now I just wait until nighttime. Nighttime has arrived. Let's talk to the old man to summon Skeltron. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Holy. Both hands are down already. Look at the bees. Look at the bees. Oh, a thousand damage per second. Oh, Jesus. This thing is only at level 11 too. Okay, let's head down the dungeon now. And I'll be looking for the Shadow Key, as well as the Cobalt Shield. Okay, found the Cobalt Shield. And there is the Shadow Key. With the Shadow Key, I can get my hands on another bow, which is the Hellwing Bow. It can only be obtained in Hell, so let's start mining down. Okay, finally made it to Hell. And there is the Hellwing Bow. Okay, I'm going to start leveling up this Hellwing Bow to see if it's better than the Beast's Knees, but in all honesty, I don't think the Hellwing Bow can top this weapon. Like, I really do not want to leave this. Let's make three Slime Crowns. Alright, all three King Slimes have been defeated. It is now at level 2 at 80%. And... I've noticed that the additional arrows or projectiles that shoots out from the Hellwing Bow, they kind of just stay stationary in the air. It's a bit weird, but it could also work out in my favor. Because these stationary projectiles still do damage, and it's like I can just summon a wall of flaming bats. But even with all of this, I still do think the Beast Knees is so much better. Now the last boss that I have to take care of to enter hard mode is of course the wall of flesh. But before that, I do want to combine some of my accessories so I will be summoning the goblin army to find the goblin tinkerer. It does have to be daytime though for the goblin scouts to spawn. So in the meantime, I will drink a gravitation potion and try to find some sky islands for some better accessories. Got the shiny red balloon and the lucky horseshoe. I also did mine some Hellstone, so I will be making the Molten Pickaxe. Perfect. Oh, that is so lucky. I guess I don't need to farm Goblin Scouts then. Yeah, the Beast Knees is just way too good to replace. So I'm going to keep leveling this weapon up. There we go. Goblin Army has been defeated. Let's go look for the Tinkerer now. Oh, there's the Bound Goblin. Okay, let's purchase Rocket Boots and the Workshop. Let's also reforge the Bee's Knees. Let's try to get Unreal on this thing. Oh, there we go. 54 range damage. Oh, that shoots so much faster now. Oh my god. Yeah, I think the Wall of Flesh is just going to get shredded. Okay, let's make the Honey Balloon. Turn that into the Amber Horseshoe Balloon. And we just got warding on it. That is super lovely. And I was just about to make the lightning boots, but I just realized I still don't have Hermes boots. So let's go find that right now. There we go. Found it. Let's go back home. Now I can make the lightning boots. I'm all set now to take on the wall of flesh. Okay, made it to the end of the world. Let's start this thing up. Three, two, one. Drop. Oh my god. 1,000, 2,000 damage per second. Holy crap, look at that health bar. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I barely had to move from where I summoned the boss. That is crazy. Okay, with the Pwn Hammer, let's go back to the corruption and break some demon altars. We've got Palladium. Mithril, and Adamantite. Let's make the Palladium Pickaxe. I'm good on Mithril. Now lastly, the Adamantite. 
And that should be enough adamantite. Let's make the full adamantite armor set now. And from 25 defense all the way to 48. And having the full adamantite armor equipped, that brings my bee's knees to 68 range damage with 41% critical strike chance. Oh my god, that is an army of bees. And look at how look at how big some of them are too. Okay, I have some hard mode armor now. So it is about time I get my hands on a hard mode bow. Which means I will be getting rid of the bee's knees, unfortunately. But the next bow that I'll be getting is the Daedalus Storm Bow. And that can only be dropped from Hollowed Mimics, so let's go down to the Hollowed and try to find some of them. But if I can't find any, then I'll have to manually summon them. Okay, here's one. This is not a good place to fight it in though. It's so cramped. Come on, kill it. Oh, there we go. First one, too. Got it to deadly as well. Now, to level this thing up, I'll be summoning the Queen Slime. Can I summon it here? Oh, yeah, I can. All right, here we go. I should probably bring it back home, too. If I can get some life regen. Okay, 50% health, second phase now. And you're finished. Okay. That wasn't too bad. But with the defeat of the Queen Slime, that brings our Daedalus Stormbow to level 4. And as you guys can tell, there are a lot more arrows falling down. There's just one more accessory that I want to get before I take on the mechanical bosses. And that's going to be a pair of wings. So let's go up to a sky island to kill some wyverns for souls of flight. To then make angel wings. Because I do have a lot of souls of light. Okay, that should be enough souls of flight. 25. And now I can make angel wings. Perfect. So the first mechanical boss that I'll be taking on is of course the Destroyer because the Daedalus Stormbow is legit the best option against this boss. So without further ado, let's begin. 3, 2, 1. 3000 damage per second. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what level the Daedalus Stormbow becomes after this. It's already at 50% health. Oh, that was close. And the destroyer has been finished. Okay, let's check it out. Ooh, it's at level 10. I think it gained five levels, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go summon the twins next. Here we go. And I'll be using some flaming arrows for some extra damage. I should have been using this from the start, to be honest. Wait. Wait, that thing's already at second phase? Oh, what? Wait, when did that happen? I thought I was focusing the spasmatasm first. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, that was so fast. And lastly, all that's left is Skeletron Prime. And I'll be testing out the Hellfire arrows this time. 3, 2, 1. Okay, not bad. I was expecting a lot more damage. Wait, let's switch back to the Flaming Arrows, maybe? Oh yeah, this is way more. What? What? 
using the Hellfire arrows, I was dealing like 1,500 damage per second. But this is well over 2,000. Yeah, look at that. 4,000 damage per second. Holy! Well, all mechanical bosses have been defeated in just one night. And that brings our level to 14. Oh my god. The size of the arrows definitely changed as well. It's a lot bigger. And obviously the amount as well. Okay, let's go make the pickaxe axe. And let's go into the jungle to mine some chlorophyte. And to search for the plantera bulb. Okay, found the plantera bulb. So, I'll be making the arena right here. Okay, the arena is all done. It's a bit narrow, but as long as my arrows can actually fall down and not hit the ceiling, then it's all good. Before I actually summon Plantera, I will be making some Chlorophyte arrows. And these arrows are very good, especially with a bow that's kind of inaccurate. Because the arrows that do miss the enemy, they'll bounce back and actually home in onto them. Okay, let's begin. 3, 2, 1. Oh my god. There are so many arrows. What? Wait, wait, wait. Was that 8,000 damage per second? Holy crap. Oh my god, look at my screen. It's just filled with core fight arrows. Now that was a sight to see. Oh my god. Let's make our way into the temple now. And depending on the size and shape of the arena in the temple, I might have to get a new bow. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, I think this is doable. So my chlorophyte arrows can reach into the arena. Oh my... I did not just do that. <laughs> but yeah, I was a bit worried that the arena was going to be too small, so the arrows would actually hit the ceiling before reaching the arena. And I was able to find the wizard, so I purchased the crystal ball. Which means I can make the endless quiver with 3,996 wooden arrows. Now I won't have to worry about buying them ever again. Okay, I've got 5 power cells, so I'll be using them all up for as much experience as possible. It's at level 17 right now, but we'll see at the very end. Let's begin. 3, 2, 1. Holy! 5,000 damage per second. Yeah, but I do have to stay on the ground so that my arrow can actually go down here. One fist is down. I might lose here, to be honest. Come on, faster. One thousand more health, come on! No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. Okay, and I'm back. Attempt number two. I think I should stay on this side of the arena more, because it is kind of steeper than over here. Yeah, that was a lot better. Okay, and that was the last one. So that brings my Daedalus Stormbow to level 23. Holy crap, it has 123 range damage. Okay, let's go check out the attack of this weapon now. So here's what it looks like with just one click. 3, 2, 1. Oh my god. And then if I spam it... That's insane! And let's see with the Chlorophyte arrows now. Oh my god! Holy! That has to be like... Over a hundred arrows on my screen right now. It's almost nighttime, so it's the perfect opportunity to get my hands on another bow. So I will be going to the Hollowed to catch the Prismatic Lacewing with the Bug Net. 
So let's buy that right now. There we go. And then I can summon the Empress of Light. And after defeating her, she does have a chance to drop the Eventide. Oh, there's the Prismatic Lace Swing. Okay, let's begin. Three, two, one. Ooh, dodge that. Five thousand damage per second. Pretty good, pretty good. Second phase now. And you're done. Did we get it? Yes, we did. And I got the Empress Wings too. Okay, goodbye to our Daedalus Stormbow. You have served me very well. It's time to start leveling you up. Okay, I got two Destroyer Summons. So hopefully by the end of it, my Eventide should be to at least level 10. Let's begin. Oh my god. Wait. I'm dealing 10,000 damage per second. Wait, what level is this thing at? It's already... It's at level 6 already? Oh my god. Okay, let's start it again. 20... 30,000 damage per second. What is this weapon? Look at that. Level 11. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. I'm also going to get my hands on the Tsunami from Duke Fishrun. So let's go get a Truffle Worm real quick. Oh, there's one. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, there's one more here too. Here we go. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. How much is just one click? 2,625. Holy! Second phase. And then third phase. One more shot. There we go. Okay, I got fish run wings. But is the Empress Wing better? I think so, to be honest. Okay, second attempt. Please, please, please. There we go. Strong Tsunami. Let's go level up the Tsunami with the Solar Eclipse. And the Solar Eclipse has ended. And the results of the Tsunami? Level 15. So, here's what it looks like. 3, 2, 1. Oh, yeah. And then with the Chlorify Arrows... Jesus! Honestly, I think the Tsunami is better than the Eventide. Okay, let's reforge both of these to Unreal. There we go, that's one. And that's two. Oh yeah, way faster. All that's left is to take on the Lunatic Cultist, Celestial Pillars, and then finally, Moonlord. But during the Celestial Pillars, there is one more bow I can get. And that is, of course, the Phantasm. Here we go. Okay, with the Tsunami, 5,000 damage per second. And then the Eventide. Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. I thought I did over 10,000 damage per second, but I was just killing those Stardust projectiles. But yeah, I was right. The Tsunami does deal a bit more damage. It was dealing 5,000 damage per second, while the Eventide was dealing about 4,000. Let's go and take out the Vortex Pillar first. Here we go. Vortex Pillar is down. Let's go and craft the Phantasm. Oh my god! Wait, this thing is crazy! Holy! The amount of arrows 
is way more than the Eventide and Tsunami. Oh my... Wait. It killed the Stardust Pillar so fast that the barrier was still on it. Oh my... What level is this? Level 12 from just one pillar. Okay, let's check how the attacks look like with just regular arrows. 3, 2, 1. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I was right, it's way more than the Tsunami. I might actually be able to one-shot Moonlord. Look at these arrows. Okay. Nebula Pillar down. One more to go. And there goes the last pillar. Let's get ready for Moonlord. This is it. Here we go. Oh my god. Wait, I just saw 50,000 damage per second. No way. Oh! And then the core is done. What just happened? Oh my god, this thing is level 22. I know I just killed Moonlord, but I'm not going to stop just yet. I do want to make the full Vortex armor. So I'm going to go kill the Lunatic Cultist again and do the Celestial Pillars to get some more fragments. Oh, <laughs> that was 50,000 damage. I'm a bit worried. My game might actually crash from this. Okay, Nebula Pillar down. Solar Pillar down. Vortex Pillar is down. One more to go. And that's the last pillar down. Here we go. Ooh! Forehead done. That hand's gone. Okay, just the core. Holy. Okay, and that should be it. I should have enough to make the full Vortex armor set. Vortex helmet. Breastplate. And leggings. 180. 81 range damage now and if i double tap down to toggle stealth it does act as the shroom my armor set which increases my range damage so 181 double tap 285 with 90 percent critical strike chance and the good thing about this armor set compared to the shroom my armor set is that i'm able to move while keeping the damage buff Let's do Moonlord one last time. There we go. One shot. Boom. Oh, holy. 67,000 damage. This hand as well. Oh my. Alright, that's going to be everyone. Thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment if you have any other mods or video ideas you want me to do, and also subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace!